This is episode 45 of the Rise Up Podcast. We're a morning radio show hosted by Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life, a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. Our podcast is a weekly conversation that will help you think and grow in your faith. If you haven't already, subscribe today so you don't miss a single episode and find out more about our show at familylife.org. They're morning people because they love mornings and people. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. Let's do it your way. No, no, no. Let's do it my way. (laughs) So what do we do with Christmas traditions when we blend two families together what happens then? Uh, Tim, Yeah, you're the newest married right. of, of the three yeah. of us. Did you come into the marriage and talk about that? When we when we first got married, I knew Trinity's family. Like, they are <laughs> they are Christmas people. I mean, everybody, I, I can't say everybody loves Christmas. I, I like to think basically everybody really enjoys that. I know not everyone does, but her family, they're like the Christmassiest of Christmas people. The Christmas <laughs> music, it starts early. There's a tree up at the home all year round. It's not always a Christmas tree, but it's always there. And then around Christmas time, it starts. So it's uh-huh. it was like this thing knowing, all right, going into making a new family out of two families, it, I, basically, basically, I, I, I seeded that ground and said, hey, I, I, I get we're going to kind of go with your family's Christmas stuff here. And there was nothing to miss and to lose. We have other family or other holidays that are more kind of the one where we do them my family's way, the way we grew up doing them. But it's been really special to be part of my wife's Christmas celebration and to kind of be folded into all of the beautiful pandemonium that Christmas means at her family's home. Um, and, and part of it also a special little little kind of added bonus mm-hmm. is uh, my brother married my wife Trinity's sister. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, so it it's yeah. so we get to, I get to see some of my family when mm. I'm together with her family on Christmas Day. So mm. that's a, a special little mix of both. That is. That's kind of neat. Therese, uh, did you have traditions coming in? And, and I will never forget my first Christmas with my husband's family. It came time for the presents, you know, and I know different people have different ways of doing this. We hadn't really talked about it. Um, my family was very much like you hand out all the gifts. And then it usually started with the oldest person in the room would open and then you go like around and then to the youngest and then the ne- they would open the next gift. And it took a very long time mm-hmm. to open mm-hmm. presents. Scott's family at the very first Christmas started out the same way. Everybody's presents were distributed to them. And so I've got my little pile of gifts and I'm like about to be part of this gift opening. And then it was like, <laughs> and I was like, what just happened? Like everybody's presents were open and oh. I had just I had just opened my very first gift and I still had and I was like, what that's how you, they were the open it all at once people. And no, I was no. like, and I love giving gifts. I don't love getting gifts as much as I love giving them. So it was really hard for me because I was like, oh, I wanted to see what you thought of that. Or I wanted to tell you why I, I bought you that. Or And it was like, oh. and so um, we didn't really argue it or discuss it. I mean, I did say, wow, like that's not how we did it in my family. I didn't see that coming. I wasn't expecting that. And I kind of opened my stuff. And But then now... Our family does it very slowly, and when Scott's family is a part of our family thing, we do it very slowly, and I think they enjoy it more um, than the whole, like, explosion of wrapping paper. (laughs) Um, Not that one way is better than another, and however your family does it is fine, but it was just like I was not at all prepared. Then I believe this is something that we started for our family was the pickle ornament because we both have German heritage in our families. And so the idea of this pickle ornament, if you've ever seen one, it's a glass pickle that gets hidden on the tree on Christmas Eve. And then for our family, like we have a box that has a gift in it and whichever kid finds the pickle first on Christmas morning they get the gift that's in the box. Hmm. And so like now that my kids are older, it's usually like a coffee gift card because they both would love that. And I used to say something like, oh, remember the pickle? But now I don't even have to. Like they'll Mm -hmm. come out on Christmas morning and it's like this thing (laughs) to find the pickle ornament. And so, you know, here I was thinking it was this, you know, big German thing. And then I, I read a while back, I was looking at like how this thing started, like who puts 
a fermented vegetable on their tree. Like, what's the history of that? And I found that they went to Germany and they asked and no actual person in Germany has ever heard what? of this thing it's just a weird thing i guess that americans do <laughs> and no. so but then yeah. my family enjoys pickles and so i feel like that is a, a great testament to our love for cucumbers and vinegar and so we've <laughs> just left it you know <laughs> but there's my daughters are like how do you explain this like to your future husband someday like mm. and I, go, I don't know you just have to say it's a weird thing that we do but anyway is that all you're going to say about the pickle uh thing every year come on you got to say I mean, more it is than that. A, it's a pretty big deal. Thank you. All right. Here we go. <laughs> oh, we got that one in. My. Yeah, it's something that the family, you know, begins to relish every year. Right. Oh. <laughs> I had to get something mm. in there. Mm -hmm. uh, after all, it's the Rise Up uh, podcast. <laughs> uh, our tradition, Audrey came in, and I'm going to go a couple different ways here. One, her family, uh, when they were growing up on Christmas evening, after all the festivities of the day, they would sit down to a huge Christmas meal, pretty much like a Thanksgiving meal, but uh, the same type of thing, maybe different foods, but a huge family formal dinner. Uh, we never exactly did that. And so our family's never done that. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we went Steve's way instead of uh, Audrey's way on that. We don't have that. But I was curious as to what the kids uh, think. So you're, you know, this wasn't many years ago. Our kids are in their late 20s, early 30s. And so I said, so what do you remember about our, you know, you know, Christmas traditions, because I was wondering if they missed something like the big dinner kind of thing. And they go, well, no, we we wake up and, you know, we have the we have our uh, mom cinnamon rolls and, a, and an egg dish. And that's mm -hmm. what we that's what they remember. But they remember something else, which I started. And I'm so glad this was the number one thing that they said they remember about their Christmas tradition. And I'm so glad I started this years and years and years ago, probably when the kids were about, I want to say, like nine or 10 years old. Um, and I've done it every year since then is I write them a Christmas letter. Uh, oh. basically it's a page or two and it's like the sweetest dad thing yeah. ever. And I write one to my wife as well. And basically it has become a, uh, you a recap of the year. Like you go over the year and the things that they've accomplished and the thing, you know, whatever. But it's just thoughts from my heart about that person particularly. And I do that. And what's cool about that is that I know Laura, for instance, our daughter, she has kept them every year. And she goes, I and it's the very, 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 very last gift that we open. I always, you know, put it up in, a, on an, in an envelope on the tree. It's going to make me cry. Yeah. And it's just kind of neat. They look forward to that. It's like, okay, it's time to open the letters. And it's a quiet time where they each individually, Laura, Will, and Audrey, sit and read their letters as I just sit there and watch their reactions as they read their Christmas letters every year. So I'm glad I started that years ago um, because it's what they think. It's the very first thing that they think of what their Christmas is in our house. So, but there is one thing I wish I had continued. And we only did this on early on. And why don't we do this every year? What's it's that? a great idea. We went into Lars Crib and we, she was old enough to sing and we had a little birthday cake and we sang Aww. happy birthday to you. And we sang Aww. it to Jesus. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. And it's like, what a great, cause that's the, that's the meaning of the day. Right. And I think now it's like, why don't I still do that? I need <laughs> to do that. And so there's nothing wrong with starting a tradition all over again. Hey, any tradition that involves cake is exactly. a good choice, <laughs> I'll take it. I think. I'll it's take an it. excellent idea and all about Jesus. So yeah. Merry Christmas to your family, whatever your tradition is. That's right. Feel free to stick around a while. We love it when you're here. This is Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. Oh. It, it is the perfect fur. It is the perfect height. It has the right number of branches, and mm. they look good. And then you flip over the price tag, and you're like, <gasps> Christmas trees are expensive. Yeah. I mean, really, really expensive. So when you get one, you want it to last as long as possible. Like, we want to be rocking this thing until, like, at least March 4th, right? <laughs> um, and yes. so, so one of the big tips is that if you see the needles falling at the tree lot, they're probably going to fall in your living room. So yeah. that tree's probably not the greatest. So if the needles are intact, you get it home, get it in water ASAP. I've never heard of this tip, though. It's kind of like you might do with your house plants, just a little spritz. The plant Oops. is like... Okay, that's enough spritzing. Oh, um, it's, okay. The tree is like this, you know, kind of still alive thing. Uh -huh. And it would normally take in like rain from the air, like through the needles. And so just a spritz, not near, not, not near no. the antique ornaments. Come on. 
on with the spritzing already, but it's supposed to help it stay fresh. No, it does work. I do the same thing with my hair. Look at this. Look Your at this. hair. Look at this. Wow. Look at this. Uh, you're going to get it on the microphone. You're Just dropping get needles it. everywhere. <laughs> so, so true. I don't know how to tell you. <laughs> Facing a whole new day is a lot easier when you remember that God is in charge. You're listening to Rise Up on Family Life. Therese, you were just sharing about how a little spritz of hydration can keep yeah. that tree alive at Christmas time. I thought that was interesting because I just learned recently that sound, well, it can kill a tree. Uh, Wait, what? Well, okay, so a little bit of explanation needed. It can Not kill- this sound, right? No, no, not that one. No, no, no. How about no. this one? Uh, it depends. I can, well, we'll leave There's that off for of now. Sounds. There's lots of sounds. There's lots of sounds there. <laughs> sort of like that. It's an, only if it's an aluminum tree. Let me explain. Uh, oh. Here, here's here's okay. the sound in right. 1965 mm-hmm. that led to the early death, they think, of the aluminum Christmas tree. This really brings Christmas close to a person. Fantastic. It was a booming industry huh. before Charlie Brown and huh. Linus came along. No. Yes, the aluminum tree was actually pretty popular. Apparently, uh, I can't speak from experience there, but apparently it was after the Christmas special wow. that the aluminum tree all of a sudden kind of came to stand for like everything that was wrong with an overly commercialized Christmas. So mm. Lucy's oh. dream of getting that big, giant, pink aluminum Christmas tree uh, kind of came crashing down with that mm. ringing oil drum reminiscent right. sound that Linus right. made. And, of course, we all, I mean, it, Charlie, what did he do for us that Christmas? Maybe brought down a famous decoration, but also gave us a pretty resounding reminder of what the season is really all about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To quote the teacher mm-hmm. uh, in that movie, very well said. We hope the rest of your day is just as much fun as this. You're listening to Rise Up on Family Life. Two of my favorite words, back to back. I love this. Back to back? Does ba- he, well, oh, that's no, two. Not no, your favorite, no, sorry. Uh, two, here are two words. Bacon and eggs. No, that's not true. Uh, these oh. two words, hilariously uncomfortable. <laughs> I love that combination of words. Oh, hilariously uncomfortable. <laughs> so there was a survey... Survey says, and you can go around in your head and okay. figure out what this is, and we'll have a little chat about it now. They asked people what's the most hilariously uncomfortable situation uh, during holiday seasons, oh. which we are now upon. And wow. that could encompass all kinds of things. You know, it, you know what, does, ever, does anything come to mind with, like, what oh. would be a hilariously oh. well, uncomfortable during the holiday season? I remember this one year I had taught my daughters to be thankful for every gift that they received. So as they opened their gifts, they would go, oh, thank you. I love it. And after like the third time people started to catch on, especially when one of my girls went, oh, thank you. I love it. What is it? (laughs) They had no no idea what it was. Is that real gratitude? Probably not, right? Let's stop stop right there because you're right at the top of the list. Oh, Mm -hmm. here's the top of the list. Ready? The most common awkward moment reported when, Forcing a smile while opening an undesired gift. <laughs> I love it. What Thank you. you. That's so That's great. Where did you get it? And is there a receipt? <laughs> Just, you know, <laughs> so appreciative. Let's practice that awkward smile. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. It's great. We weren't sure how you liked your coffee, so we didn't make any. Hope that's okay. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. Guacamole, potatoes, and chocolate. Those are the good ones. Not together, but those three foods <laughs> are the foods that people are most likely to swipe right on when they see them on a dating profile. So if you mention how much you love paying extra for guacamole, that might get you a date. Uh, so we're <laughs> kind of checking in today, finding out what what foods do you think would be the worst, like the least compatible Foods. Heather in Farmersville Station says that it would be oysters. Debbie in Maryland says liverwurst. Heather in Earlville says people who put ranch on everything. <laughs> I don't understand why ranch is so popular. Hi, my name is Joyce. I live in Cogan House, okay. Pennsylvania. A uh, deal breaker as far as food goes. Liver and onion. <laughs> oh, amen, sister. <laughs> amen to that. I'm not a fan of that. I don't even uh, think I've ever had liver and onions. My husband likes liver and onions and collard greens. 
But you're <laughs> married to him, and that's that was not a deal breaker, obviously. <sighs> You've. It's we don't cook it. <laughs> oh, we don't. <laughs> there is a deal breaker. It's never cooked in our house. <laughs> okay, so oh, you have to go out. So if you go out to a restaurant and they have that, that's what he's going to order. That's right. Got it. Well, we honor you and your husband for making it work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Despite your Bye-bye. food incompatibility. <laughs> Bill from Andover. Raisins. They're just grapes with the life sucked out of them. <laughs> <laughs> grapes with the life sucked out have of them. Have you ever had a bad experience like you thought it was a cookie that was going to have chocolate chips and then it ended up being raisins? All the time. Oh. It's just That's just wrong. That's like the biggest disappointment of my childhood. Yeah, well, we'll put you on our prayer list. (laughs) Tom Carlson, Panama, New York. All right, Tom, what food does not make the cut in your book? Sardines. Ah, yep, yep. I was going to say. If you meet a woman Mm -hmm. who really loves sardines, you're just going to go the other way, right? (laughs) Well, I love sardines, but my wife married me anyhow. Oh, Oh. look at that. Look at that. A virtuous woman who can find. That's what the word says. (laughs) That's good. (laughs) May the blessings of the Lord be with you in all that you do today. This is Rise Up on Family Life.